Hello, my name is Nicholas Pren and I'm the current editor for the Australian Outlook at the AIIA. Today I have the great pleasure to be speaking to Professor Ramesh Thakur from the Crawford School of Public Policy at the Australian National University. Thank you so much for joining us, Ramesh. Pleasure, Nicholas. My first question is, has Australia's stance to nuclear weapons and disarmament changed within the last year? Uh, not within the last year. I think it changed with the change of government. Mm. Uh, this government has downgraded the importance of uh, nuclear arms control and disarmament. It's difficult for me to believe that if the Labour government was, had still been in power, we would not have attended the Nuclear Ban Treaty Conference. We may not have signed. That they always depends on the final text. And as it stands, there are provisions in the text that would make it difficult for us to sign it in good conscience and maintain the alliance relationship which we have with the United States. On the other hand, if we had taken part, we might have been able to uh, change some of the text and make it more palatable uh, and possible for us to sign. So it's a pity we didn't take part in the thing. I think it's also, in my opinion, it's a violation of our obligations under the NPT, uh, which requires each state party to take part in good faith negotiations. There are no other negotiations currently underway. This was a duly constituted UN General Assembly mandated conference. So we certainly should have been there. Uh, but as I said, I understand, given the text we have, uh, why we find it uh, not possible to sign it at this stage. Mm. Well, switching regions now, do you see that there might be a chance that Iran will restart its nuclear weapons program, given Donald Trump's recent remarks about pulling out of the Iran deal? And does this risk reigniting nuclear proliferation within the region? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's be clear on what has happened. Uh, because I'm afraid your question is somewhat misleading. What the president has done is he has refused to recertify. Mm. Congress, after the deal was signed in July 2015, passed a law requiring the president to certify every 90 days yeah. that Iran was in compliance and therefore uh, the present arrangements will continue and Congress need not reimpose sanctions. As far as we know, so far, President Trump has not asked Congress to reimpose sanctions. What he has said is, I want you, the Congress, and our allies to renegotiate, renegotiate the deal, to toughen the conditions, and to make the restrictions on Iran's nuclear weapons program permanent. At the moment, there are 10, 15, 25 year various phases, and effectively, the key provisions will be lifted, the key restrictions, end uh, in, let's say, in, in a decade's time. If Congress now decides to reimpose sanctions, it has 60 day time frame in which to consider that, and then there's another 30 days in which things can be changed. If Congress decides to reimpose sanctions, then the deal falls apart, and Iran will kick the inspectors out, yeah. and it will, I think, convinced of Trump administration's determination to go in for forcible regime change, it will have the freedom to go back to a nuclear weapons program without international inspections. And the consensus in the strategic community is it could then acquire nuclear weapons in a matter of months, rather than at the moment, it will take more than a year to do that. So it's up to the Europeans who, are going, who have said they will use the 60-day period to lobby Congress furiously not to reimpose sanctions. The alternative and the best outcome now is for Congress to rescind the law requiring mm. presidential recertification, but stay with it as long as the International Atomic Energy Agency continues to certify that Iran is in compliance, and they've conducted about 40 inspections so far. Then they need not reimpose sanctions. The Europeans uh, as a community and individually the British, French, German leaders have said this is in their national interest. They're staying with it. The Russians are staying with it. Iran, I think, will stay with it as long as things. So the odd result, and this is something that Iran's President Rouhani said in a televised address after Trump's speech on Friday, he said, look, the United States today is more isolated than ever, which is a very peculiar result to come out of this. That's where we stand. It's a complex issue. The potential for nuclear weaponization, which will then mean that the United States will have little choice but to use military force, and get caught in yet another major Middle East war. So yes, the danger is there, mm -hmm. but we haven't quite got to that point. 
Okay, thank you. And you briefly mentioned the uh, UN Nuclear Weapons Ban Treaty. It's now been signed by 53 countries, but critically no NATO members and no nuclear armed weapon states. Has any practical progress really been made since the NPT? And is the world any closer to total nuclear disarmament? Well, <laughs> that's back to front. The reason we have the ban treaty is that there's no practical progress has been made under the NPT yeah. after 49 years. Not a single nuclear warhead has been eliminated because of the NPT. I don't mean to diminish the importance of what has happened as a result of bilateral agreements between Russia and the United States or the previously the Soviet Union and as a result of unilateral measures as well initiated by Presidents uh, Gorbachev and Reagan. We now have reduced warheads by 80% from Cold War peak. So there is substantial progress, but not one warhead has been eliminated under the NPT. Even though most people believe, and the World Court gave an advisory opinion to that effect, that Article 6 of the NPT does require not just engage in, but conclude good faith negotiations to the nuclear disarmament. It's a combination of exasperation at the failure of nuclear disarmament under the NPT, the fact that there has been, there is currently no nuclear arms control discussions at all underway between any two or more of the nine countries that have nuclear weapons, and growing anxieties about elevated nuclear threats and risks. These three factors convinced the majority of the NPT member states to go for a ban treaty as a means of increasing pressure, not as a means of going outside the NPT to destroy the NPT, but to complete the NPT's Article 6 requirement by increasing the normative force of Article 6, because Article 6, the way it has been interpreted by the five nuclear weapon states, left that legal gap on prohibition. This treaty closes the legal gap, and norms of non-proliferation and disarmament and non-use are reinforced, which will strengthen the boundary between nuclear weapons and conventional weapons, make it harder for any country to use nuclear weapons, and hopefully will add to the sense of pressure from the international community, which has said the collective international community is articulating a strong moral revulsion to these weapons and the foreseeable effects of nuclear weapons use in the future make them morally unacceptable to us with res regard to any country possessing them. Well, thank you for speaking with us today, Ramesh. Uh, for more content like this, please check out our YouTube channel, uh, AIA Vision, and check out our blog, Australian Outlook, on our website. Thank you.